Buenas, buenas. Welcome to Music Marketing TV. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and today we're going to take a look at some of the Kilohertz plugins for mixing. So we're going to look at Snap Heap, Faturator, Disperser, um, the Phase Distortion, the Filter, the Compressor, a few of these uh, different plugins that all work very well together. Now, the reason why I want to show you these uh, plugins within Snap Heap is because um, while they're very uh, useful plugins on their own, like the Transient uh, Shaper, it's, it's a spectacular plugin. I think there's a bigger benefit to use all these plugins together within Snap Heap or Multipass, as I showed you in the previous video, because we have access to LFOs, envelopes, pitches, or pitch modulation, MIDI modulation. So there's lots of powerful tools that you can use to modulate your effects processors. All right. So without further ado, let's take a listen to this demo. And let me start off with it quiet and then I'll bring in the level. All right, there we go. It's a pretty nice little uh, edit to the track I made for the faceplant demo and the multipass demo. You know, it's a bit of hard style. There's you know some extra raw hard style in there, but for the most part, we're we're gonna be able to see how these uh, plugins like the gate, the um, faturator, and all these other smaller plugins add up to make a much uh, whole mix. Or you know, in your sound design case create a whole new kick drum or a whole new uh, bass sound, you know, like a reverse bass. So without further ado, let's take a look at the, um, the top kick right here, which is the first thing I, I really try to change with the, um, with the face plant. So let's go over here to the top kick. I mean, did I see if I face plant with multipass? So here we have that kick. Typical hard style kick. However, when you add the uh, multipass, it becomes much darker, heavier. There's pitching modulation going on thanks to the disperser. So let's take a look at how this works. So let's load up the multipass. And what I'll do is I'll go step by step and redo, remove some of these. Uh, plugins. So first up, I use a gain in the low register. To give it some bottom end. And then the next thing I do is I add the disperser here. So you see how it creates a sucking motion for the kick drum. Let me show you what it sounds like on the entire kick drum itself. Or actually, let me show you on the on the these waves over here. So let me turn off snap heap and then I'll just turn on dispersion. Okay. See how the disperser kind of pinches the frequency and then moves it? So let me um, switch this up a bit. Let me change the frequency or the frequency and the note. See that? If you were to add the punch of that, that kick drum, actually, 
it is the whole kick drum. Let's remove the gross beat for a second. See how it changes the envelope? You see that? So you're able to manipulate your bass drums, 808s, um, certain percussion, and make it have this strange envelope. You could also probably use this on bass lines and have the you know the original attack of the bass line, but then switch it up on people. So that's really powerful for that. Uh, however, I'm using it within Snap Heap, as you can see over here. Actually, I, I didn't. I removed it because in in this case, what I want to do is a reverse space. So I no longer needed that. And with the addition of the growth speed, I was able to make that pumping effect. With the dispersor on. You know, it's not getting the result I wanted for this specific track, but it gets you a really interesting result. Let's push up the amount. Let's bring the, the top kick as well. So that is super distorted, but you guys get the idea. It's you can mangle the uh, the contour or the envelope on an instrument. So it's really cool. Pitch envelope, pitch envelope, not the you know amplitude envelope. Kind it kind of does it too, but it depends on the frequencies that you're trying to boost or cut. Now, if I remove that for a second and go back to what we had before, let's hop back to the uh, multipass again on that kick drum right there. I'm using a transient shaper. To make that bottom much punchier. And then I added a bit of distortion. To get to give a little bit of crunch and drive there. And then I have a fat trader on the mid range. And again, to compensate for that level that we're gaining from the fetch rater. So that, that frequency range doesn't get blown up. It remains nice and tight. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can add fuzz. And because we're using multiband, or working in multiband, we're not gonna overdo the the top end. If I were to do that on the top end over here, watch. I almost kind of make it sound like a hi hat. So I don't want that in the case. I just want it to be nice and punchy in the mid range area. To create presence without you know destroying people's ears. It's pretty cool. And I have another gain at the end to reduce 2 dB in total. So that's the, the punch, right? You can use this on a snare. You can use this on a click or a regular uh, hip hop kick, you know, at the 808. So you can do that type of processing on these type of drums. Now on the next part here on the bass. <laughs> oh man, that is so distorted. First up, what I did was uh, I introduced a fruity stereo shaper because some of these instruments did have stereo information. So hear that? I wanted to make it tight. And then I will add the snappy. And let's turn off the bus processing on it. First up, I have a gain again, just to control the drive that I'm putting into these plugins. Then I have a face distortion, so. Here 
Here we have the phase distortion. I'm doing a little bit, just a tiny bit. And then let me add the next band right here. And let's turn off these plugins right here. You see, it's a lot of them. Lots and lots of them. Okay. Let's go over the Fatuator once more. In this case, I'm not trying to make a crispy punch, right? Or a crispy attack. What I'm trying to do is create some harmonics. So that's what I did. I increased the drive, increased the color, and didn't use much of the fuzz. See that? The next thing I did was added a filter to remove some of the muddiness and the low end. You're really going to need a subwoofer to listen to that, um, but it cleans it up. As you can see, I'm using a 3 times slope. Then I'm introducing a compressor. To tame the sound. And then I'm using a 3-band EQ to boost the mid-range and the top end. Because I'm going to end up distorting later again with the patch I'm going to use a filter. Now check this out. I'm using the filter cutoff to control the cutoff position. I mean, the, I'm using an LFO on uh, quarter notes to control the filter cutoff. Hear that? And I can change the filter slope to make it more narrow, more wide. And then I'm using a reverb to create some stereo information. But just a tiny bit. Enough so you can uh, affect the sound once we throw it through the fatuator. Check this out. Even though we're only adding a tiny bit of reverb, we're still getting quite a bit of crispiness on the stereo field. So I like that. Let's keep it like that. And what's cool is I can, at any point in time, return back to the original setting I had. And finally, I have a filter here again. Once again, came the low end. And I have another gain over here, which I'm not using uh, because then I'm running this through a free wave shaper. Then through an EQ. And then through gross speed. And we finally get this sound. Super, super distorted. Uh, let's check out the Pro 3. It kind of has more bounce to it because we're not overdriving the 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 lowest harmonic or the the root frequency. So you know you can do either or. Now the next thing I, I did in this track with Kilohertz plugins was I gated my leads and particularly the pad right here. Why do I do this? Well, simply because I want to add rhythm to the track. If I remove the pad... You can barely hear it, but especially during the first part of the drop, you really feel the rhythm. You don't hear it, but you feel it. You feel the momentum of it going chopping every uh, 16 note. If I were to remove the transgate as well, it'd be very static.
See there, you can hear it, but you're not really feeling it because it's doing the same thing all the other instruments are doing. Once you add the transcape, then you can feel what it's doing. So let's solve that for a second and let me show you how to use the transcape. It's very simple. You, here you set up the steps that you want to use. So let's say I wanted to do eighth notes. So I have a gross beat here, so let's remove that for a second. See that? I can change the ADSR of this so I can make it smooth, have a smoother attack. And a longer release. I could likewise change the resolution here if I'd like to. That is such a classic sound. As you can see, it's super easy to manipulate this. You have eight different uh, transgates that you can you know, use and bounce between. Let's go back to how I had it before with the 16th notes. And I believe I did this. So essentially, I'm using this almost like you would use a rhythm guitar. You know, you're creating some rhythm and you're letting the other instruments, you know, play the melodic information. See how you can't really hear it, but you can definitely feel it. So that's another use of these uh, kilohertz plugins. And yeah, we've covered quite a bit of them. Cover the disperser, transient shaper, distortion, fatuator. By the way, the distortion is quite cool. Let me just put it on the kick drum for a second. Where is the talk? Over here. Okay, check this out. So here's the distortion from uh, kilohertz. See how it drastically changes the characteristic of the sound. Let's put it on the um on the bass drum over here. I mean on uh, on the bass. Let's, uh, turn these on. Turn off the snappy. Turn off the wave shaper. So while I'm using this with a hardstyle kick, this is still very much applicable to like a dubs bass or a um, a neuro bass or even a pop bass. You know, you try to make something a little bit more plucky, a little bit more more um, more present in the mix. You can definitely add that sine distortion. <laughs> And you hear the top harmonics of it come alive. So these are just a few of the plugins that Kilohertz has to offer. There's tons and tons of them. Let me just show you the list of them. Okay, we have three band EQ, a bit crusher, a chorus, comb filter, compressor, delay, distortion, dynamics, ensemble, 
filter, flanger, formant filter, frequency shifter, gain, gate, pass, ladder filter, limiter, nonlinear filter, uh, phase distortion, phaser, pitch shifter, resonator, reverb, reverser, ring mod, stereo, tape stop, transgate, and transient shaper. So we've covered some of these other plugins like the transient shaper, the resonator, um, the ensemble in our other videos. So make sure you guys watch those because we have a video on faceplant where we also load some of these other plugins and explain them deeply. And then we have another video on multipass where we um, create transient or multiband transient shapers. So check out those videos. All right, and with that, we're gonna wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel and make sure you ring that notification bell so you stay up to date with our music production and audio software mm. plugin videos. Once again, I'm Kevin Latro with Music Marketing TV and I'll talk to you soon. Peace. Thank you.